Okay. Uh, so today, uh, this is the first of two mandatory lectures, uh, and Iva Topolovac and Matea Žilak will give you a presentation on social inclusion, challenges and needs of people with disabilities. Uh, they are kind of the experts for this topic uh, in the University of Zagreb, since uh, it is uh, very closely related to their PhD topics. Uh, before we begin with the presentation, I would just like to remind you that today I posted a post in student's channel regarding the Figma account, so please create those accounts and let uh, Eva Nagac know uh, which email address you used so she can add you to your projects. Uh, the today's lecture will be divided in um, two parts. The first part will be presented by Matea, so Matea, you can start with the presentation. Okay, thank you very much, Daria, for the introduction. Uh, uh, before I begin, uh, let me just uh, check if you will see my uh, presentation. Uh, just a second. I can see I can see my other uh, screen. So just a second. Okay, we can see the PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, let me just turn off my uh, camera and uh, please tell me if something uh, goes wrong. Uh, can you see the? No, you're you're not sharing anymore. Sorry, we we should try that, but. Uh, okay. Do you see my? Yes, but we, we see we see uh, your view with notes. Okay, I don't know how to make this uh, disappear. <laughs> Just a second. Are you on the dual monitor setup? Yes, yes. So just share the screen from one monitor that you have the full presentation on. Yes, but when I press the share screen, I can't see that monitor. I, I only see screen two. Am I sharing anything? Yes, uh, we we see the presentation like we should. OK, thank God. <laughs> so sorry for uh, the little delay. Uh, thank you, Dario, for the introduction once again. And uh, before I start uh, this lecture, I would just uh, I would like to shortly introduce myself. Uh, so I'm a research assistant at the Faculty of Electrical Engineering and uh, Computing in uh, Zagreb, Croatia, and I'm also a PhD candidate where my research area is, um, well, it is connected to uh, the topic of uh, InnoSeed projects. So uh, my research area is related to the accessibility of uh, emerging technologies uh, such as augmented and uh, virtual reality. Uh, so I hope that this... Uh, Matea, uh, okay. Yes? 
Uh, you are uh, you, on your screen. You are sharing the teams over the presentations. So may, maybe just minimize teams. Now? Oh, yeah, not perfect. Okay. Uh, sorry. Thank you. Uh, so uh, before uh, I um, go on, why this topic uh, at the beginning of the workshop? So as you know, the Innocent Project's goal is to improve the social inclusion of people with disabilities and uh, how we want to reach this goal it is by creating innovative it solutions based on emerging technologies okay so since uh, all of you will be working together on fulfilling this innocent project goal uh, in this presentation the importance of social inclusion in general but also with a focus uh, special focus on people with disabilities uh, will be discussed uh, so at the beginning, uh, let's go through shortly uh, through the outline of uh, the presentation. At the beginning, we will go through uh, some theoretical background uh, on social inclusion. So what it is, uh, for whom it matters the mo most, what are the vulnerable uh, groups uh, related to social inclusion, but uh, of course with a special focus on people with disabilities and the barriers they experience. Uh, then we will shortly conclude what the goals of social inclusion uh, are, uh, how those goals can be uh, reached in uh, each of the key areas for improving the social inclusion of people with disabilities. And uh, at the end of the uh, my part of the presentation, I will conclude with, with one uh, key, key takeaway from this uh, lecture. OK, so um, uh, we can begin with the definition of uh, social inclusion. As I already said, a little uh, theoretical uh, background. Uh, on the title of the slide, you can see the question, uh, what is it? But uh, since the social inclusion is a really complex concept, maybe it would be better if we ask questions not only what, but also how and for whom. Uh, so here you can see the first definition by the World Bank's essential reading on social inclusion, which says that the social inclusion is the process of improving the terms for individuals and groups to take part in society. So this first definition uh, implies that there is a need for improving someone's position within the society, which explains the what part of the de definition. There is also a second definition by the World uh, Bank. It uh, says that the social inclusion is the process of improving the ability, opportunity and dignity of people who are disadvantaged on the basis on their identity to take part in society. So this second definition says that social inclusion can be improved for people who are somehow excluded based on their identity. So uh, this part of definition explains for whom question. And uh, the how part of the question is explained with the middle of part of definition. So how by improving the ability, opportunity and dignity of people to take part in society. So if we again look at the for whom part, uh, which says that social inclusion can be improved for people who are somehow excluded from uh, social, uh, from society uh, based on their identity, we can see uh, and observe a little paradox that uh, says that social inclusion can be best explained by using the uh, social exclusion term. Uh, also, on this slide, you can see one underlined uh, term, which is the identity. Uh, so people can be uh, disadvantaged on the basis of their identity. Identity is defined uh, actually as the qualities of a person or a group that makes them different somehow from others. So uh, having that in mind, we will continue to the next slide, which actually says uh, for whom social inclusion matters. So this is uh, in general. So uh, because identity is defined uh, like 
that I uh, just said. Most common identities that we can observe uh, are those uh, based on gender, sexuality, race, culture, religion, all old age, disability. And for uh, I'm certain that there are many more many more identities that are experiencing exclusions and that these are just uh, some common uh, that we can see every day. Uh, it is important to observe that some aspects of identity are visible, while some aspects of identity are hidden. But what is certain is that uh, social exclusion actually affects many areas from different life domains, such as economic, political, cultural and social. So many opportunities and rights from each of these life domains we usually take for granted or actually not think about them at all. So here are just some of the examples of uh, negative effects of social exclusion. So people who are um, experiencing social exclusion are most likely to have a lower social standing, lower income, less opportunities for employment, and all these other uh, things that we normally take for granted. That is why raising awareness about all this is a really important aspect of social inclusion in general. Uh, but as I said, uh, from now on we will focus more on the people with disabilities. Uh, this is also a focus of InnoCID uh, project. And uh, if you observe this uh, definition of disability from Merriam-Webster dictionary, we can see that uh, disability is an umbrella term which covers a wide spectrum of impairments. So mental, physical, cognitive, developmental, and many others, and that it includes many activity limitations and participation restrictions. So considering this definition and some statistics that uh, World Health Organization reported uh, that over 1 billion people globally experience disability. If you put that uh, on picture, that is actually one in seven people. So uh, you need also consider that the majority of people also do not have reported disability. So uh, people with disabilities are in, gen in general a highly represented group. Also, they are uh, one of the most vulnerable groups experiencing social exclusion. Well, what is uh, more important to consider is that people with disabilities are also a very heterogeneous group. Uh, this means that each disability may have different effect on someone. Um, for example, if you consider children in school, so children with uh, disabilities in school, children, for example, with hearing or visual impairment, uh, or uh, even intellectual disability tend to have lower grades than children with physical disabilities. Uh, also, same disability may have different outcomes in terms of person's functioning. If you see an example uh, picture here on the slide, these are two persons that both have visually uh, visual disability, but uh, one person is a person who cannot see and the other one is colorblind person. We can for sure say that uh, these two persons have different needs. For example, if you imagine a blind person using a computer, uh, it uh, will be different than that the way uh, this other person will be uh, using the computer. For example, a blind person will uh, probably need a screen reader. So uh, also uh, persons with same disability can have different needs and uh, this all implies the necessity for holistic uh, view and interdisciplinary collaboration uh, when designing uh, solutions for uh, the social inclusion of people with disabilities. Uh, so we can now talk about some common barriers that are experienced by people with disabilities day to day. 
this is the definition of a barrier by World Health Organization. So uh, barriers are actually factors in a person's environment that through their absence or presence limit functioning and create disabilities. Having said that, we can see that there are many different uh, types of barriers. And uh, on this slide, uh, we will just mention uh, some of the examples of barriers. First one is architectural or environmental barrier. Uh, for example, if you uh, imagine a person in a wheelchair that is not being able to access a building that has only stairs, uh, that has no elevator, uh, then lack or uh, of or unequal opportunities in different life domains, uh, for example, in healthcare, uh, about half of people with disabilities cannot afford uh, proper healthcare. Or in education, uh, children with disabilities are often not in regular schools because of, for example, there is no enough assistance or the environment in itself in the school is not accessible. Uh, lack of relevant assistive technologies. So assistive technology is any product, device or, or equipment that is needed for the individual with disabilities to uh, improve their functional capabilities. Uh, so inappropriate access to digital infrastructure, accessible ICT, negative attitude, discrimination, feeling of being incompetent, legislative regulatory barriers. So uh, number number of uh, barriers that uh, people with disabilities experience every day. Uh, so when mentioning these barriers, we can say that uh, in general, goals of social inclusion is to provide equal opportunities to all people, regardless of their identity uh, or disability in our particular uh, sense. So uh, when talking about people with disabilities, one of the goals will be for, for certain to remove or reduce the barriers they experience every day related to education, employment, healthcare, communication, and accessibility in general. Uh, but in order to address uh, all the needs that people with disabilities uh, have, we need to involve them in this, in this process for sure. Uh, let's shortly take a look at the INOCID goal. So as you all know, the INOCID goal is to improve the social inclusion of people with disabilities by creating innovative IT solutions based on emerging technologies. So the underlying part is actually a method of how INOCID wants to reach this goal. And it actually wants to answer this question. So how to take advantage of technological progress, that means all the emerging technologies, for higher goals, that is to improve the quality of people's lives. So by improving the quality of life of people with disabilities, uh, people with disabilities are not the only one that are positively affected by this, but also their families, peers, caretakers, and actually society as a whole. So uh, in order to reach that goal and come up with some social innovation based on emerging technologies that would address the needs of people with disabilities, we need some kind of a well-structured framework that explains all, and there are many key entities that need to work together and their relationship uh, on how to achieve uh, this goal. So uh, through the Innocid workshop, you'll be getting a clearer picture of what entities are included, but for now you can have a more general picture where you uh, know that uh, the government, the industry, civil society and academia uh, is needed to be, uh, are needed to be involved in order uh, to achieve this, uh, this goal. Also for this uh, framework to work, people need to be educated about social inclusion, the awareness needs to be raised, and all this needs to be a subject of matter from a young age. Uh, okay, so when we have these goals, 
uh, we can continue to the how question. So how to uh, reach those goals? As we already mentioned, uh, there are many factors apart from someone's health condition that affect uh, functioning and uh, disability of person with disability. And this makes social inclusion of people with disabilities uh, really complex. Uh, fortunately, there are many legislations and policies that are addressing the rights of people with disabilities and uh, there are some uh, general guiding principles, for example, from the United Nations Convention uh, on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. Uh, so this is a, a legally binding uh, policy instrument that uh, addresses all human rights and uh, fundamental freedom by all persons with disabilities. It is adopted in 2006 and uh, uh, above 150 countries and organizations uh, have signed the conventions. Uh, so these general guiding principles are related, for example, to accessibility, non-discrimination, uh, full participation and inclusion in society, mm, equality of uh, opportunities and so on. Uh, another example of um, uh, policy is the European Disability uh, Strategy that is adopted uh, after the Convention in 2010 uh, and it builds upon the Convention and uh, the eight main areas for action are uh, here shown on the slide. Uh, besides that, there are many other public and private instances, as well as uh, regional and national state agencies that have recognized the necessity of improving the social inclusion of people with disabilities. This means that we are getting towards inclusive society, but it is not yet fully achieved. Uh, OK, so everything mentioned above uh, leads us to the conclusion that there are many areas with room for improvement in the social inclusion of people with disabilities. Uh, here are some of the key areas that are intertwined in this uh, context, uh, such as accessibility, education, employment, independent living and raising awareness. Um, education is a basic human right, employment is uh, necessary uh, for the disabled, uh, for them to be financially independent uh, and so on. So uh, uh, from this part of the presentation and the lecture, we will focus on each of the key areas um, uh, more, more specifically. Uh, so the first key area is uh, accessibility. So Accessibility uh, is defined, uh, actually is a term that is used to describe the degree to which a product, device, service or environment is accessible uh, to all people. So to all people, uh, including people with disabilities and including uh, the elderly. Uh, there are some strongly related uh, terms uh, that are strongly related to the term accessibility. This uh, one is universal design. Maybe you have heard of it. It is uh, defined as a method of designing products, services and environments that are usable by the highest number of people possible and that without the need for ad adaptation. So maybe the most known example is the one you probably use uh, every day. Uh, it is called a sidewalk ramp or curb out. Uh, a curb cut, uh, a curb cut, sorry. A curb cut is uh, essential for people using wheelchairs, but uh, it can also be benefit, uh, beneficial for kids riding bikes, uh, for seniors with uh, walkers, uh, for parents pushing strollers, for delivery people, for example. So, um, we we can see that the universal design is uh, a very hot
topic and universal design is also strongly related to the uh, terms design for all, inclusive design and accessible design. Uh, design for all and inclusive design are defined as designs that uh, respect the diversity of people and promotes uh, social inclusion and equality. They, besides disability, consider uh, cultural, social and other uh, people's needs and they take into account the usability. Uh, while accessible design is a product design with special emphasis on capabilities and needs just of uh, people with people with disabilities. Uh, OK, so here on the slide uh, you will see different examples of uh, universal design. Uh, so on this picture you can see uh, children washing hands uh, and uh, this kind of uh, pipe for washing hands can be beneficial both for children and, uh, for example, for people in a wheelchair. Uh, also, this is uh, the kind of uh, accessible um, stairs where uh, there is a way for people in wheelchairs to come down or uh, up because there is no uh, elevator. Uh, then these kinds of doors where, uh, which we can see uh, in, for example, shopping centers, uh, faculties and any other uh, buildings also are accessible to people with um, wheelchairs, for people with uh, um, parents with strollers, uh, older people with uh, walkers and so on. Uh, this kind of chair that uh, can be customized uh, for, uh, for example, different heights. Uh, then you can see here on the slide uh, a toe mouse. So it is suitable for people with uh, upper limb dis uh, disability, but can be also uh, can also be beneficial for ordinary people because it can reduce uh, hand and wrist pressure and improve work efficiency. Uh, here you can see an example of how seats in an airplane were uh, designed in 1965 in Boeing 747 and uh, example of a seat in an airplane in economic class today. So the important message is uh, for you to design for a wide range of body sizes and uh, shapes. Of course, uh, when talking about accessibility, uh, the very important part of it is uh, ICT accessibility. So ICT uh, is an abbreviation for information and communication technology, and uh, it includes computers, uh, communication networks, uh, technology for processing, storing, displaying uh, all kinds of information such as uh, images, text, voice, etc. Uh, having in mind uh, that and that uh, we all uh, use social media, social networks, communication applications and many other applications that you probably have installed on your uh, mobile devices, uh, I can only imagine that what would be the answer on this question. So can we imagine our day to day activities without ICT? So uh, digital revolution brought many benefits, but uh, we need to think about uh, not reinforcing the existing inequalities and achieve accessible ICT. Why is this uh, even more important? So here on the slide you can see population is getting older. So uh, as you already know, uh, with aging, some disabilities in older people take place, such as hearing disabilities, visual, cognitive disabilities. So in order for them to have an independent participation in society, accessible ICT is needed. Uh, besides this, compatibility of ICT tools and services with assistive technology is also uh, very appreciated. For example, a screen reader is an uh, assistive technology 
uh, that uh, is needed for uh, visual impaired people, blind people, to perceive information that appears uh, on the website. Once uh, when we have uh, all this, we can say that we are going towards uh, digital inclusion as well. Uh, talking about digital inclusion, uh, we need to talk about the web. And the web is a very important resource in many aspects of life, including education, employment, government, and many others. So considering that the web is such an important resource, we need to consider also the web accessibility. So the web accessibility is uh, also defined as the extent to which people with disabilities and the elderly can use websites as effectively as other people. It is sometimes uh, defined as a web design practice that seeks to enable all users to access and use uh, web content. So there are some guidelines for web content accessibility and the ones that are considered as uh, international accessibility standard are the web content accessibility uh, guidelines by the World Wide Web Consortium. So their uh, web accessibility initiative develops uh, different uh, specifications, so technical specifications uh, for developers, uh, guidelines, techniques, and uh, many other resources that describe uh, accessibility for different solutions. Uh, so currently version 2.1 uh, is considered as a uh, newly uh, newest adopted version, while uh, previous version 2.0 is considered all, uh, also an adopted as an uh, ISO standard. So um, after that, uh, new version 2.2 is announced uh, for this year, so 2021. Uh, these web accessibility guidelines are based on uh, four foundational principles uh, and uh, they ensure that web content is accessible to every user, including those with uh, different different uh, disabilities. Um, so these uh, four foundational principles are perceivable, operable, understandable and robust. What does it mean for the web content to be perce perceivable. So this means that a uh, user must be able to perceive the information that is presented uh, on the web and uh, it means that it can be invisible to uh, all of their senses. So one sense uh, need to be able to perceive the information. Uh, then operable, uh, it means that uh, of course the user interface uh, components and navigation must be uh, operable in a sense that uh, a user uh, must uh, be able to perform all interactions that are required from him or her. Uh, then the understandable, uh, it means that uh, it is simple. Uh, it is simple to understand uh, both the information and the uh, interactions required for the user interface. And uh, the last one is uh, robust, so the content must be robust enough uh, so that it can be interpreted uh, reliably by uh, all of the user agents, including assistive technologies. I already mentioned uh, the, the example with the screen reader. Uh, okay, so on this slide, you you can see the uh, you will see the accessible website uh, prototype. Uh, so here is the home page of uh, one uh, website. Uh, this prototype is actually a product of uh, research and multidisciplinary co cooperation between the Academia State Regulatory Agency for Telecommunications and NGOs of uh, persons with disabilities. Uh, so this is a website prototype that has uh, information of interest uh, related to telecom offers to different groups of people, 
including uh, people with disabilities, uh, youth and the elderly. Uh, the web prototype is designed in line with uh, the accessibility guidelines and uh, uh, it is developed uh, related to user requirements that are collected with uh, previous surveys conducted uh, with people with disabilities. Uh, on the upper right corner, you can see the menu with uh, accessibility options. Um, so here is a more zoomed uh, uh, picture of the uh, accessibility options. They are in uh, Croatian, uh, but uh, these accessibility options were defined by the end users as must have options. So some of the uh, options are increasing the font, uh, changing the font, uh, select different color contrast, underline and highlight uh, links, uh, grayscale images and turn off the lights. Uh, on this slide, on this uh, screenshot, you can see uh, how it looks like when uh, when the options for underlying uh, and uh, highlighting the links and with high uh, contrast background uh, is uh, selected. And uh, this is another example uh, with another combination of uh, colors, uh, also with uh, the highlighted uh, links. Uh, and also on the middle of the screenshot, you can see uh, the magnifier. Uh, okay, this is just an example uh, for the website accessibility. Uh, but what you need to bear in mind is that uh, we could all benefit from accessible design because disabilities are not just uh, permanent disabilities. They can be also temporary or situational. Uh, for example, uh, older people with changing abilities due to aging, I already mentioned that, uh, then people with temporary disabilities, uh, for example, if, if someone has a broken arm or has lost his glasses, um, on, then uh, we can uh, have an example of uh, situational uh, limitation. Uh, for example, if you are outside uh, in an environment where there is uh, bright sunlight or in an environment where uh, you cannot listen to an audio. Uh, also, uh, disability will be when you have slow internet connection or have limited or expensive bandwidth. So all these accessibility guidelines, uh, if, are, uh, if they are followed, um, we can all uh, benefit uh, in some some way uh, from them. Uh, and with this uh, slide about the accessibility uh, part can be concluded uh, and we can move towards to the next uh, key area, which is the education. So that education is uh, really important uh, it can be seen uh, from the Article 24 from the UN's uh, Convention, which affirms the right to education as a funda fundamental one. Uh, why such an article is needed in the Convention? Well, um, many pupils with uh, disabilities are completely excluded from schools and universities. Uh, children with disabilities that are placed in segregated institutions are not a uh, rare situation. Or if they are placed in a mainstream setting uh, or school with their peers, there is not uh, adequate support. Uh, so support is needed and is a prerequisite for the full participation in society, access to labor market, development of one's potential. Uh, a very important factor for the implementation of inclusive education for children with disabilities is uh, to engage with parents, families and uh, community organization in the process. There are uh, different approaches on how to engage with um, parents and families and um, how they can be used to support the inclusion 
and to make it effective and meaningful for, for, or for all parties. And you will hear more about this in the next uh, part of the presentation. Um, so one of the approaches is related to the uh, benefits of ICTs for inclusive education. So as we already mentioned, it is important to, uh, to have support uh, so for children with disabilities and their parents from the first year of a child's life. Uh, in some countries, specifically, uh, it was a rarity to have children with disabilities involved in the kindergarten and in uh, regular primary or secondary school classes. So, uh, in such a way, parents of children with disabilities were uh, somehow on their own and they uh, needed to use uh, different experiences and best practice practices from other countries. Uh, they learned from uh, books from those uh, countries that uh, help them in everyday work, uh, preparation for work uh, and uh, for educational materials. So for preparing and adapting education materials for their, their children with disabilities. So before parents uh, spent a lot of time, so it is uh, it was really time com consuming uh, to prepare materials and uh, adapt them to to their children. So each material had to be prepared uh, either by hand or a computer, then printed, uh, cut, uh, folded, and then probably used uh, only with uh, one child. Uh, but today we can say that uh, the learning desk has been replaced by a tablet screen. So all these uh, learning methods and uh, principles uh, used uh, in books such as, uh, I don't know, uh, pairing, uh, matching, uh, sorting, uh, and all, all, all different principles uh, that were used before on the printed material, materials can today be used uh, in applications for tablets and uh, smartphones or uh, com computers. So uh, we can say that uh, ICT uh, has some, uh, somehow made it uh, much easier for the parents and professionals uh, to improve and be creative in their activities, to create uh, educational materials, and design uh, innovative new ways of uh, learning. We will try to uh, explain this on the example of uh, ICTAC applications. So as you probably know, or if you don't, uh, ICTAC uh, Competence Network uh, has a multidisciplinary team that develops innovative applications for people with complex communication uh, needs. Uh, so before, uh, before tablets and smartphones uh, appeared, um, they also used uh, low tech, uh, low tech, uh, how to say, uh, low tech application and means uh, or printed materials. Uh, for example, in, uh, in a situation where a child uh, has complex communication needs and uses symbols to, to communicate with uh, their parents or uh, peers. So low tech would include uh, printed materials. A medium tech is an example of uh, where we also have uh, printed symbols, but for example, you can for each symbol uh, record uh, a voice. Um, but now uh, when the uh, tablets and uh, smartphones are here, we can have high tech um, ways of uh, communication with such uh, children. Uh, so ICT AAC applications uh, actually uh, have different categories of application. Applic uh, different categories of applications uh, for communication, for effective communication, uh, the ones that uh, uh, actually support education, so reading and writing, 
uh, language development uh, mathematics and also for uh, raising public uh, awareness about the needs and abilities of uh, people with disabilities. Uh, all these applications are free and developed for platforms such as Android, iOS and uh, web. There are uh, so far more than 50 applications published uh, and some of them are actually translated uh, into more languages through InnoSit project. You can check it out uh, on the ICTAC official website. Uh, but what is more important uh, with these ICTAC applications is that each of the application has uh, some form of customization for every user. Uh, for example, in this uh, screenshot you can see that, um, well, it's on, in creation, but the number of tasks can be customized. Uh, or then you can uh, select if you are using uh, left or uh, right hand. Uh, also, there is a possibility to completely personalize uh, the application usage uh, by including not symbols from ex existing galleries, but you can also upload uh, your own photograph. Um, there are other uh, settings uh, related to also uh, sound effects uh, for choosing the color of the assets used in the application and so on. Uh, here is uh, an, one more example of application where high contrast is included. Uh, this is uh, used with uh, children uh, with visual impairments. And uh, with that pre uh, slide and this slide, uh, I can conclude uh, those two key areas uh, we uh, thoroughly described and uh, all the other examples and approaches uh, for improving the social inclusion of people with disabilities I will uh, leave to Eva. Uh, but before we take a short five minute break, uh, I would like for you to remember one key takeaway from this part of uh, lecture. Uh, and this is that the social inclusion is both a process and an outcome. The second one is that uh, disability results not just from a health condition a person has, but also from many other uh, environmental factors we can also uh, contribute to and that we can all uh, benefit from accessibility. And uh, that would be all from my part. Oh, uh, I don't know, Dario, uh, is a five minute break okay? Yeah, 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 five minute break will be okay. And then you will continue with the second part of the presentation. So yes, maybe we we'll start at uh, when? Two. At two, okay. okay. Okay, at two. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, Matea. See you in eight minutes.
Hi and welcome back everyone. Uh, now we will continue with the second part of the presentation by Eva Topolovac. Eva, please proceed. Thank you, Dario. Uh, hello everyone. Um, I will shortly introduce myself. Um, my name is Eva Topolovac. I am a research assistant at the University of uh, Zagreb Faculty of Electrical Engineering and Computing. I'm, all, I'm an also PhD student there uh, and I work on uh, many projects related to people with disabilities, um, improving the, the quality of life of people with disabilities and raising awareness about them together with uh, Matea who has just presented you the first part of the presentation on social inclusion. Um, well, that's it for introduction. I will now turn off my camera so you can focus on the uh, presentation. And just a second. OK. Uh, OK, I hope you see the second slide. Anyone? Yes, yes. I can see you. Thank yes, you. Can see it. Thank you. OK, so for the outline. Um, the focus of this uh, part of the presentation will be on the uh, Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities that Matea has already mentioned, uh, more specifically on the Article 8 that is um, related to raising awareness uh, about people with disabilities. Um, there are three points to this article. Each of those points will be uh, more thoroughly explained, uh, followed by good practices from partner countries, as well as um, real life examples um, and uh, examples related to emerging technology um, and uh, the um, parts of uh, uh, presentation that Matea has um, also uh, mentioned, such as employment and independent living. And finally, uh, you will see the key takeaways of this presentation. So first, let's start with uh, the following situation or question, perhaps. Uh, imagine finding yourself in the following situation. A person is trying to pour, pull their wheelchair into their car. The person refused your help, but it seems he or she is really struggling with this task. What do you do? Um, the answer to this and other such questions uh, is situation specific. However, there are some common rules that uh, to follow, same as following social etiquette rules. Uh, I will leave you to think about this situation and we will uh, reference, it, reference it later during this presentation. So moving on to the center point of this presentation, the Article 8 uh, that is related to uh, raising awareness about people with disabilities. As I said, it focuses on three points. Um, these are like simplified points. Uh, we will, uh, 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 I will specifically describe uh, in detail those points in the following slides. But for now, uh, let me repeat what is actually the goal of this convention. Well, the goal is to stop viewing people with disabilities as objects of charity, medical treatment and social protection, and instead see them as subjects with rights who are capable of claiming those rights. Uh, I have included like a fun fact uh, that the 3rd December is the International Day of Persons with Disabilities. Uh, so there is, yeah, there is that fun fact. OK, so for the first uh, point, as I mentioned, uh, the first point is to raise awareness throughout society, including at the family level regarding persons with disabilities and to foster respect for their rights and dignity. Um, what is important to remember, maybe the most important part of this point is that society and family are uh, crucial for raising awareness about people with disabilities. First of all, because parents are those who face barriers towards inclusion, such as fear of stigmatization, lack of awareness about the rights of people with disabilities, lack of awareness about educational alternatives. Matea has already mentioned that 
uh, not so long ago, children with disabilities weren't included in um, kindergarten or primary school uh, together with children without disabilities. So these are all uh, barriers they come across uh, during their life and their parents' support is the most important things uh, for their future. For their future. Um, so parents uh, are also, uh, ne it is necessary to uh, provide parents with information and consultation uh, and they often help each other to get that support and practical advice. Uh, which is why it is not uncommon that most organizations for people with disabilities are led by the family members of people with disabilities, as is in the case of the Creation Down Syndrome Association, which uh, participates in the Innocent Project, as you know probably, uh, and uh, which helped us in developing uh, the Learn to Cook application. I don't know if we have mentioned this application, um, I have pasted the link to uh, ICT AAC applications that Matea has mentioned in her presentation uh, in the chat. You can open it. Uh, there, uh, the website is translated to English, so all of you can at least uh, learn what the applications are about. Um, and I will reference some of the application throughout this presentation. So please, uh, if you can open the link. Um, OK, so moving on. Moving on to uh, good practices from Hungary, uh, which is uh, the communicator uh, application. Matea has mentioned uh, the creation version of the communicator, and uh, she has said that uh, this application is meant for uh, persons with complex communication needs. Um, complex, complex communication needs, if you don't know, refers to people who cannot cope with everyday communication situations by means of speech alone. Uh, so the communicator provides them uh, an opportunity to communicate using icons representing everyday, sim everyday actions, um, terms, uh, etc. and allows them to communicate through those icons, using those icons. So this communicator application, which is similar to Creation uh, One, was developed by a Hungarian Association for Persons with Intellectual Disabilities, which was established in 1981 uh, on the initiative of parents. Other good practices from Hungary include uh, specialized therapies, uh, which can uh, bring society closer to people with disabilities. For example, uh, animal assisted therapy or pet therapy is a guided interaction between a person and a trained animal. Most used animals are dogs, horses and cats. Uh, and uh, during this kind of therapies, uh, children with uh, ADHD or Asperger, Asperger syndrome uh, show, uh, showed reducing uh, their showed a reduce in their symptoms. Uh, and they have learned to recognize their own basic feelings and to deal with emotions like anger, sadness and fear. Furthermore, uh, there, is, uh, 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 there are benefits to using music therapy. Uh, as music therapy, if you think about it, uh, stimulates, uh, uh, um, stimulates auditory senses as we are listening to music, visual senses as we have to read the chords of the music we are about to play, and uh, motoric and uh, uh, motoric um, motor systems that are repeatedly activated as we are playing an instrument. Uh, and finally, sport therapy, which is actually self-explanatory, since we people without disabilities also benefit from sport therapy, uh, making our bodies healthy. Muay Thai Boxing Association in Debrecen is exemplary in providing support to sports facilities of people with disabilities. Moving on to the second point of the Article 8, uh, which is, in my opinion, the most important one, and uh, it says that we must combat stereotypes, prejudice and harmful practices relating to persons with disabilities. Um, I have identified two uh, like main terms uh, for this point. Those terms are sensitization about people with disabilities and discrimination. 
Matthias has already said something about those terms. I will provide you with an official definition for both of those terms. Um, and yep, that's it for this slide. Uh, sensitization, you probably already know something about sensitization. It can be defined as a type of an education that is conscious or unconscious, that has a planned or spontaneous influence, that has that uh, affects our attitude and forms it to raise awareness, empathy and acceptance of deviations from the normal and the ordinary. In simple words, I would put it that sensitizing someone not related to actually to people with disabilities is accepting the differences between ourselves and that person. Moving on to the definition of discrimination, discrimination on the basis of disability in this case. Uh, discrimination is any distinction, exclusion or restriction on the basis of disability with the purpose or effect of impairing or nullifying the recognition, enjoyment or exercise of all human rights and fundamental freedoms. Um, it includes all forms of discrimination. Uh, there are basic, there are uh, four main forms of discrimination. Uh, those are direct discrimination, indirect discrimination, harassment and denial of reasonable accommodation. Out of those four, I think uh, three of them are pretty self-explanatory. For example, direct discrimination is discrimination based on the disability of the person. Indirect discrimination is an apparently, apparently neutral uh, criterion or practice that puts a person having a disability in a disadvantage comparing to others. Uh, and harassment involves unwanted conduct uh, and creating an intimidating, hostile, degrading and of, or offensive environment. What you don't, you know, what you probably don't know, maybe you know what it's about, denial of reasonable accommodation. Uh, this is related to the uh, employer-employee uh, relationship and it means that employers shall take uh, appropriate measures where needed uh, to enable a person with a disability to have access to, participate or advance in employment. So it's related to employment. We will later be talking about uh, the uh, employment uh, of people with disabilities. Um, I have uh, found this sentence that uh, to me sounds extremely important uh, and I've put it on this slide uh, alone so you can focus on the meaning of the sentence uh, and the point is that we should uh, become aware of ourselves as discriminators. Uh, in some cases, uh, perhaps we are not aware that we are using some terms or doing something that uh, is actually not appropriate for that situation. So the first step to raising awareness is perhaps educate ourselves on the appropriate, on using appropriate terms and uh, taking appropriate actions. Um, I have listed some key takeaways in the end, so we will go through um, some of the basic, uh, perhaps, uh, terms and uh, ways of thinking uh, about people with disabilities. Um, I have prepared um, a short history on the treaties, uh, conventions and uh, um, uh, charters that are uh, nest that were throughout time uh, really important in addressing disability equality and non-discrimination in uh, European Union. So this is focused on the European U Union, not worldwide. Uh, for the most of the history of the European Union, the founding treaties contain no explicit reference to disability, and therefore no disability-specific competence existed. The first major breakthrough, uh, however, occurred in 1999 with the Amsterdam Treaty. Uh, this Amsterdam Treaty uh, included the first explicit mention of disability. The second important uh, article was Article 13, uh, which uh, was actually a general non-discrimination article 
uh, but it uh, contained a reference to disability and this article is now included in the Treaty on the Functioning of the European Union, Union and it provides the EU with the competence to take action uh, to combat discrimination on a number of enumerated grounds, including disability. It also provided legal basis for, for the Racial Equality Directive, and the Racial Equality Directive is related to the um, Employment Equality Directive, which was uh, brought into action in 2000. Um, I have listed uh, here on this uh, timeline also the Convention on the Rights of Persons with Disabilities. However, this convention is a uh, United Nations convention. It is not uh, a European Union's convention, uh, so we will skip through it for now. Uh, the second uh, or the fourth actually um, important treaty was the Lisbon Treaty, which came into force in 2009 and it introduced uh, some further important changes with regard to disability. Uh, this treaty is also important because it changed the status of the EU Charter of Fundamental Rights, um, which had first been adopted in 2003, but came into force uh, in 2009, thanks to the Lisbon Treaty. Uh, this charter is important because it has the same legal value as the treaties and because the EU is obliged to comply with the charter in all its activities. The charter itself specifically addresses the rights of people with disabilities in a number of articles. This is why it is important. And finally, I have listed the uh, European Disability Strategy um, uh, that was active uh, till 2020 and uh, the uh, newest strategy for the rights of the persons with disabilities uh, that will be uh, in place since now and till uh, 2030. Okay. I was also mentioned uh, the U European disability strategy, I think. Okay, moving on to perhaps more interesting uh, statistics which are the number of discrimination complaints uh, in Croatia. Uh, this uh, data is for the uh, year of 2019. I haven't found any more recent data. Uh, the data I have taken from the report of the uh, public defender for people with disabilities in Croatia. Um, so, as you can see, there are not that many complaints in 2018 and 19. The number of complaints was 69. Um, maybe we should look at the first three categories um, of uh, complaints. These are employment and work, access to goods and services, and general discrimination. Uh, I have prepared uh, real life examples, uh, real life suits. Uh, that went through the office of the public defender in Croatia. Um, I thought uh, they were interesting. For example, a passenger, a person uh, with disabilities was taking the intercity bus uh, and uh, the bus driver was not allowing the passenger to use the seat meant for people with disabilities and also used inappropriate terms when addressing the passenger. Um, this was resolved uh, in a way that the transport company apologized in writing to the applicant and uh, started a disciplinary proceedings um, against the bus driver following uh, the bus and following the official uh, recommendation for the discriminatory and unprofessional behavior of the bus driver. Another interesting example is uh, the participation or rather not, not being able to participate in a cooking show on national television. So a person in a wheelchair uh, wasn't able to participate due, due to inaccessible environment. Um, this was resolved with the public apology uh, by the national television. Uh, in the apology, uh, they stated that um, the cooking show had a BBC license that had uh, certain scenographic requirements from which the national television sh uh, shouldn't have deviated. So that was the reason for the inaccessible uh, environment. 
you can draw your own conclusions from this. Um, the next example is the inaccessible underpass in the city of Slav Slavonsky Broad. Um, this is a good example for design for all that Matea has mentioned. Um, because besides being inaccessible for people with disabilities, the underpass was inaccessible, inaccessible for bicycles, strollers, the elderly. And um, this was resolved. Actually, this wasn't resolved yet. Maybe it has in 2020, but uh, I don't have that data available yet. However, uh, when the report was written, um, the, um, uh, the main constructor of the underpass uh, have, has not yet made a statement or commented the suit, so we don't know what actually happened here. Uh, okay, so here are uh, some good examples of combating discrimination. These were just some examples of discrimination so that you uh, see that uh, discrimination really is present uh, everywhere. Um, since the um, incident with the uh, national television and inaccessible environment, um, the uh, public defender has conducted uh, workshops for media representatives and uh, students from the University of Zagreb Faculty of Education and Rehabilitation Scientists. Um, I think the workshop for media representatives was extremely important since uh, media uh, representatives are the ones whose uh, perception of people with disabilities is extremely important as they are um, the ones that uh, can take that perception and uh, pass it on to us. Um, also, uh, in the uh, Faculty of Education and Rehabilitation Scientists, the public defender has presented some common grounds for people with disabilities complaints and uh, explain the rights and actions to take in case of discrimination on the basis of disability. And uh, yes, of course, there were lectures in the police academy as well. Um, yet another uh, sentence I have found inspiring perhaps, uh, and that is that for a person with a disability to truly have equal opportunities in his or her life, he or she must, in the broadest sense, be surrounded by a barrier-free world. Uh, well, the point is actually to uh, remind, remind ourselves that we are the ones that can um, make this world a barrier-free world, and we are the ones that need to change in order to change the world. A bit of a cliche. Um, okay, so uh, we are uh, referencing that situation that I have mentioned in the beginning. The situation of a person trying to pull the wheelchair into their car and uh, the person has refused our, our help. Should we help the person or not? Um, well, the idea in this case is that we should not help the person since she refused our help. We should move on. Uh, say hello or whatever and uh, continue with whatever we were doing. Um, this is, uh, I will explain this actually on the next slide and I will tell you why this should be like, why this is a uh, correct uh, and appropriate action to take. Um, generally, people do want to have help people with disabilities in certain situations. However, uh, people often lack the knowledge of how to do that and uh, this makes them either afraid to approach them or they have been perhaps uh, rejected in the past uh, or anything similar to this. Okay, so uh, referencing that situation, um, we have uh, developed an application for raising awareness about people with disabilities. And while we were developing this application, we have uh, organized meetings with um, representatives of different uh, organizations of people with disabilities. And they themselves have told us uh, what they preferred 
we do in certain situations. Um, the main advice they have given us is the following. Uh, to remember the following steps, actually. Of, of course, we first have to introduce ourselves. And the next step is to ask the person if he or she needs help. So this is the first step. And if we have established that the person needs help, the next step is to ask the person how we can help him or her. Um, the reason not to help a person if he or she refused help is because this way we show re that we respect his or her decision. Of course, if the person is trying to be independent and uh, do something on their own, we cannot interfere with that action. Uh, we have implemented this knowledge that uh, people with disabilities have provided us uh, into an application called the Encounter application. Uh, in creation, it's called Susretnica. The application is not available in English. Uh, I have translated uh, these two screenshots, screenshots uh, so you can get a better idea of, of what the application is about. Um, I have uh, linked the uh, ICTAC um, web page, uh, as I said, in the chat, so you can find the application there. I encourage Croatian students to um, either download the application or use it as a web application and try, uh, try it out. So uh, the application implements different situations uh, with people dis with disabilities and uh, gives guidelines on how to uh, conduct ourselves in these situations. Uh, another uh, application for raising awareness uh, is the HACOM quiz. Um, all of these applications, not all of these, but the Susretnica and HACOM uh, quiz, were developed uh, with um, a creation regulatory authority for network industries. Um, and uh, in short, in creation, uh, this is called HACOM, so that's why it's called HACOM quiz. Um, this quiz uh, enables you to, um, to uh, experience, uh, to see how people with uh, different impairments, for example, motoric, visual, cognitive, uh, experience, how they experience uh, using this type of quiz. Uh, I also encourage uh, creation students to try uh, HACOM quiz um, because it is also not available in English, only in creation. I have translated this for the purpose of this uh, presentation. Um, I have also listed uh, what uh, different visual impairments, uh, um, how they affect uh, the perceiving this mascot. Um, these are different uh, conditions um, where a person cannot distinguish between certain colors. I will not go into details. Uh, yeah, so I encourage Croatian students to definitely try it out. Uh, moving on to the Access City Award. Uh, the Access City Award is uh, an award that recognizes and celebrates a city's willingness, ability and efforts to become more accessible. Um, it was first launched in 2010 uh, with the um, European Disability Strategy, uh, and uh, it and the uh, 2021 winner was the city of Yon Shopping. Um, I have done my research, and I think this is the correct pronunciation. If we have some Swedish students or students who know Swedish, uh, please correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, so the city of Young Shopping uh, was the winner uh, due to implementing uh, tactile maps, signage, um, due to renovating 120 playgrounds uh, to improve accessibility. Uh, they have continuously included uh, organizations of people with disabilities uh, into decision making processes uh, in different construction projects uh, and so on. Uh, so in this map, uh, you can see, the, I don't know if you can see my uh, cursor, uh, if you can, uh, this is the city of Yonjoping. Uh, 
Um, all the green uh, pins are uh, the previous uh, winners and all the blue pins are the uh, second and third contenders. Um, in 2021, the second contender was the city of Bremhaven in Germany, and the city of Gdynia in Poland was the third contender. Uh, moving on to the final and um, and uh, third, actually third and final um, point of the Article Eight which is to promote awareness of the capabilities and contributions of persons with disabilities. Uh, I would say the main thing to, uh, to remember about this point is that people with disabilities are able to contribute to society uh, same as everyone else. Um, I have found um, an example while I was searching for something else. Uh, of the mayor of Cuneo. Uh, Cuneo is, uh, I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, uh, it's a city in Italy. Um, the mayor uh, is blind, but he wasn't uh, born uh, blind. He lost his sight uh, due to a, a, some sort of a condition. Um, he said the following, uh, the main advantage my opponents used against me was my disability, as they wanted to prove, I would not be able to do a proper job as a mayor. I was forced to prove just the opposite. The extra courage I had to find within myself was the key difference between me and my political opponents. Um, this would be an example of discrimination, as he said his opponents used his disability against him. However, he uh, managed to um, to become the mayor and I think he was re-elected in 2017. Uh, he first became mayor in 2012. Um, uh, moving on to inclusive employment. Um, well, I think it's also self-explanatory that inclusive employment in includes equal salaries and other benefits uh, comparing to people without disabilities. I have found uh, data from 2018 about the employment rates for uh, all partner countries. Um, as you can see, only France and Portugal uh, have employment rates for people with disabilities above the EU average. However, if you look at uh, Croatia's employment rate for people without disabilities, it's not really, it's the lowest of the countries here. Um, but bear in mind that this are the data from 2018. I believe the numbers are um, higher now. However, I don't know what the numbers are. Uh, an, ex uh, an excellent example for improving employment and uh, preparing, training young, young people with intellectual and developmental disabilities for the labor market is the Escape Room project. Um, this project was um, motivated by the lack of vocational training adapted for young people with uh, IDD and it was motivated by the new legal framework that came into force uh, in 2019 uh, that requires the hiring of people with disabilities in entities with more than 75 employees. Uh, and the goal of this uh, project was to improve market integration and partial independence of young people with IDD. Um, Pedro and Maria, uh, I don't know if they're supervisors, uh, I don't know if you have met them, but they uh, are a part of this project. So if you have further questions, maybe you can uh, ask them. Um, this is the map of um, the escape room project, uh, similar to the classic escape room. Uh, when entering a room, participants are confronted with uh, time pressure and a certain goal. Um, place in, they are placed in situations such as the interview, uh, their first day of internship, um, and even their professional day-to-day -day life. Um, 
and their key and their behaviors are thoroughly observed and analyzed through a par powerful debrief um, and some conclusions are drawn based on that. Um, the main benefit is that in one or two, two hours, um, the escape room can highlight the natural behaviors of each person, allowing to identify personality traits, attitudes, uh, and commitment to the group, since uh, maybe I haven't mentioned, but uh, participants are in uh, teams, uh, and group dynamics, uh, etc. Moving on to other good practices regarding uh, employment and uh, uh, preparing uh, people with disabilities for the labor market. We have one example from Spain, uh, which uh, are the ICT workshops for increasing personal autonomy. Um, they are conducted by the UPV and Occupational Center and uh, they are related to information technology and uh, social networks. Furthermore, um, yet another good example from Hungary, um, there is something called work experience program for students with learning disabilities, where students get opportunity to get familiar with um, several workplaces. Um, they are uh, visiting those workplaces in small groups and accompanied by a mentor, uh, which eventually helps them decide on their choice of career. And uh, one more good uh, practice I will uh, mention is the Balthazar Theatre, which is the one and only professional theatre whose members are uh, actors and actresses with intellectual disabilities. Um, and there is another fun fact, um, which is the disab Disability Friendly Workplace Recognition. Uh, which is actually founded by the Salva Vita Foundation, Ministry of Human Resources, Hungarian Association for Excellence and American Chamber for, of Commerce. Um, this award uh, is meant for companies that demonstrate an outstanding commitment um, for employing uh, uh, people with disabilities. Uh, it has dual aims. Uh, Using the award logo, uh, it supports bringing together people with disabilities and potential employers. And uh, on the other hand, it rewards employers who are committed to best practices regarding uh, disability in the workplace. Um, and we have now reached the independent living. I will provide you with some examples. Um, so um, I I think you are all familiar with the concept known as smart home. Uh, if not, smart home is a home equipped with uh, the technology that can be controlled remotely. Uh, so one example for um, an experiment with independent living is the um, human ambient assistant living platform um, from France. Um, it's uh, It contains uh, it's an experiment including an apartment divided into four spaces um, that have uh, furniture and blinds uh, that could be remote, uh, controlled remotely, um, that have a floor sensitive for fall detection, uh, also motion capture systems and smart locks. However, this apartment is not a real apartment. It is um, part of the testing program. Uh, it also has uh, a one-way mirror uh, uh, rooms and uh, for user tests, uh, etc. Uh, something similar to that would be the eWall project, uh, which is uh, not an ambient assisting living, but is refers to an entire wall that would be like a huge screen. Um, and would offer services such as activity coach, video-based ex exercising, and personalized guide. Uh, the first example I mentioned would be uh, an example of using the um, IoT, uh, Internet of Things, Emerging Technology. I don't know if you already, I think you haven't. Maybe you've read it in the report. Uh, there are several emer emerging technologies. Maybe Matea has mentioned them. I I don't remember. Anyway, uh, the eWall project is um, 
an example of using the 5G uh, networks as it requires uh, uh, large bandwidth. Uh, another example of using an emerging technology uh, are AI powered smart glasses um, presented on the image on the slide. These smart glasses are um, produced by Envision. Uh, when I was uh, writing about them in the report, they haven't yet been released. However, they are now, and they supposedly can uh, scan text, a video call, uh, pro uh, they provide instant texting, scene descriptions, face recognition, object recognition, color detection. So these are uh, smart glasses meant for people people with visual impairments. Uh, their battery, battery lasts for five to six hours, which sounds pretty good. Um, so envision smart classes if someone is interested in trying them out. Uh, this brings us to the end of the presentation and the first key takeaway. Um, I have um, prepared some sort of quiz where uh, two terms will be uh, presented on the slide. Uh, one is the correct term and one is incorrect. Uh, I will show you just two terms so you get the idea what I mean. So a person who uses a device to speak or uh, mute, uh, one of these is correct and one of this isn't. Maybe someone would like to say which one is a correct one, a correct term. Okay, no one, maybe for the next one, uh, should we use the term disabled person or a person with a disability? This one should be easy. I've said a person with disability like a million times. <laughs> okay, the next one, perhaps accessible parking or handicapped parking. You can also write accessible. accessible. Accessible parking, okay. Person with a physical disability or a crippled person, this one should be easy as well. Okay, normal person or a person without a disability. A person who has overcome his or her disability, a successful person. Okay, mm. so all of these terms are uh, presented in this table, along with suggestions what you should or shouldn't do. Um, I think you will get this presentation as a material for, for learning, so you can um, take a look at this uh, table uh, in more detail. What um, what I recommend you do is to um, make yourself aware about uh, the problems that people with disabilities face, as well as educate yourself on, especially since you are a part of the Innocent project where you are developing a prototype for people with disabilities, uh, at least you should know what are the appropriate terms to use and what aren't. Uh, I have included also a slide with uh, useful links, um, which is in the end of this presentation. Uh, and I recommend uh, that you take a look of, at those useful links, at least the disability etiquette, which, um, uh, which has a list of things that you should remember when uh, addressing and uh, approaching people with disabilities. And uh, uh, for the end, I would I would say that you actually can do a lot. It just depends on how much you are willing to do. And these are the useful links and sources for the images. And thank you all for your attention. So thank you Eva, for the presentation. Does uh, anyone have any questions, any questions for Eva or Matea? Uh, there were some some examples from Hungary and Portugal for the escape room. Uh, maybe you want to comment on that if you are directly involved uh, with the project, or maybe you have another examples from your countries. 
either for discrimination or increasing the social inclusion. Okay, I see you are not as active as we expected. However, tomorrow is the hands-on session uh, with Figma prototyping tool. The session is scheduled for a bit later in the day. It's uh, 6 p.m. Croatia time. Uh, and there uh, you will be given a hands-on lecture on how to develop a prototype. So please be more proactive and ask questions because uh, that is the main tool that will that you will be used uh, during this virtual mobility. Uh, once again, thank you, Matea and Eva. Uh, it was a great presentation, and as Eva said, those presentations will be available to you as learning materials. And thank you for attending this meeting. Till tomorrow. Thank you very much. See you tomorrow. Bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. You. Bye.